Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Rich Batts. Uh, this is my module one um, discussion post for ACTE 699. Uh, so a little bit about myself. Uh, first and foremost, um, I work at Central York High School. Um, it is my second year teaching. I uh, just started today actually with the students. I uh, went pretty well. Um, so in that picture to the left, that's our logo for Central York. Uh, the middle guy there, Gregor Mendel, favorite scientist, great guy. Um, father of genetics, in case you guys, you know, don't know who Gregor is. Um, and then obviously on the right there, DNA, because genetics is my favorite topic to talk about when I'm teaching the students. Um, it doesn't come until the end of the unit. However, uh, I do like to dress up as Gregor Mendel and tell my students I'm going to be out that day. Um, I've already set the line um, for my class that I have this semester. I told them that I get a guest speaker to come in when we start genetics. Little did I know it's actually me dressed as Gregor Mendel. Um, but that's, you know, a different story for a different time. Uh, so Central York, second year, um, some other things about me, some of my hobbies. Um, top left up here, this is me. Um, this is my now current fiance. Uh, we actually got engaged in July, so that was exciting. Big step in the summer. Um, I enjoy powerlifting uh, and just lifting heavy in general. Down here I actually have uh, three state records um, for this organization. Uh, right there you can see the um, squat bench and um, overall total. And then finally, uh, Dallas Cowboys are my favorite football team and I'm so excited that football is starting up again. Um, I know the Cowboys have their defense is suspended and so is Zeke, but we'll figure that out when the time comes. Um, so kind of some other things that are going on uh, in this program. This is my second to last class. Um, I only have one more and then I'll complete the master's program. Hopefully it's offered as a winter course. That way uh, I can, you know, get done before the end of this year. Um, but I guess we'll see. Um, as far as the concentration, I am in the uh, STEM concentration for this program. Uh, I think it will correlate well with me uh, being a biology teacher, as I previously said. I think the STEM aspect can really um, and has really helped me kind of evolve my teaching and, and learn different strategies. Um, and it is only my second year of teaching, so I think it's I'm you know really glad that I did this program so early uh, in my career. Uh, so moving into the questions, kind of transitioning there. Uh, so question one said Mills and Spencer outlined four stages of the action research process. Uh, which of these stages do you feel will you have the most difficult and why? Uh, so there are the four stages, identify an area of focus, collect data, analyze and interpret, and develop an action plan. Um, as you can see, I kind of bolded analyze and interpret data because I believe that would be the most difficult for me. Um, you know, overall, I think analyzing and interpreting data is the most difficult for anybody. Uh, you get a pile of information, then you have to kind of figure out what to do with it, how to go about it, how to analyze it, um, how to put it to use. Um, and kind of things along that nature. So I think that's a very big and important part because as you can see down below, uh, you might get false correlations. Uh, this is kind of a concept that uh, we talked about in a previous class and I kind of found it funny, the example that they gave, which I have down below there as well. Um, but ice cream sales. Ice cream sales increase in the summer, uh, but so do the number of people who drown. So they, one must be acting on the other um, for such a correlation. Right, so you know that's basically saying if we decrease the ice cream sales, then the people number of people who drown should go down in the summer. Well, obviously we know that's not related. There's no correlation there. Uh, however, if you were looking at these sets of data, you might pick that, and you might think that um, maybe not to that extreme, but in the classroom for something that we don't know the obvious answer to, um, we could get that false correlation and then switch up our strategy just to make it even worse. Um, so that's why I think it would be most difficult to analyze and interpret the data to try and figure out what we're actually looking for um, and if it's truly the thing that is acting on it. Uh, question two on page 22, uh, Mill's discussion um, discusses the need for teachers to make uh, action research a part of daily teaching practices. What obstacles do you see with this approach and why? Um, state testing is kind of a big one just from that time allotment. Uh, that we get as a biology teacher. I do have the Keystone um, test at the end of the year. Uh, and, you know, with snow days, missed school, those sort of things, that doesn't correlate to changing the date. Date is set ahead of time. Uh, so, you know, we have to make that time frame to get the students what they need. And by no means do I agree on the test or try and teach the test because I do not agree with it one bit. But I'm just a second year teacher. What do I know? Um, so that, you know, testing that time requirements, even in the class, um, that time requirement to, you know, do an action research every day. 
Um, what I do think though, we should always reflect on our lessons. Um, in my lesson plans, I have a spot for reflection to kind of type in what went well, what worked, what didn't work, um, and then kind of maybe some ideas. Um, I think that helps me for the next time that I teach this uh, to kind of go back and say, all right, well, this example, then nobody understood that, or this example, nobody enjoyed, or something along those lines where um, it can help me connect with the students more and it can help me to understand, um, you know, what's going to work and what's not going to work instead of doing the exact same thing each and every semester, each and every class, um, and having it not work each and every time. Uh, this kind of helps me move past that. Uh, it's not a true action research, obviously. Uh, however, it is a reflection on my lessons. Um, they can kind of help me get to that action research step. Um, you know, you're a lifelong learner, so we need to keep learning um, about what's going to increase our teaching practices. Uh, so I have lifelong learner there, exclamation point, because we do need to do this action research and we do need to see um, what we can do to better our skills. Um, and then on page 23, uh, I thought it was really, you know, their strategies that they laid out. You plan it, you implement, and then you evaluate. That's what we do on a daily basis. We plan our lessons, we give our lessons, and then we evaluate how they went. Um, I know a lot of people might skip the evaluation aspect and go on to the next lesson, uh, but we need to evaluate our teaching just how we are evaluating our students' learning. Last but not least, question three. Um, you know, the stories from the field, uh, which one kind of resonated with me more as a teacher? What concerns do I have? Uh, I thought the Julie Nora one, the Rob, um, from Roger Williams Middle School stuck with me more. Um, just because she, you know, the state testing aspect that she talked about, similar to her, uh, NCEE test, um, where all of her students, regardless of the language they spoke, had to take this test. Um, and then I also found it interesting to see that there is a, they started with a 12 person team and ended with a two person team. This to me shows that we have a lot of teachers, but we have a lot of teachers who don't want to go through the action research and put in the extra step in order to be better and in order to be that best teacher that they can be. Um, and the quote from that that you know stuck with me was there's two types of teaching professionals, two types of professionals. Uh, teachers who work in the trenches every day and educational researchers um, who can help us to assess our teaching in a way uh, that gives us meaningful information. Um, so. Teachers who want to be better, pretty much. Teachers who are working in the trenches to get better, to do everything they can to be a better teacher. Um, and I think that story kind of shows that with their 12-person team to a two-person team and her saying how much they started collaborating after that, uh, which is, you know, obviously something that we need to do as educators, kind of getting ideas from everybody else. Um, and then action research in my class, uh, you know, like I said, that um, concerns would be those false correlations or insufficient data. Um, and I said waste of time and resources. I mean, uh, with that insufficient data, doing the uh, action research and not getting any results, not getting anything that's beneficial um, to me or my students or finding something that's harmful to me or my students. Um, that can also kind of be a concern within the action research project in my class. Uh, so that is my module one presentation. I hope you guys enjoyed listening. Um, give me some comments below and I look forward to working with you all this semester. Thank you.